What's up ladies and gents? The Hidden Cup 4 qualifiers have featured 7 maps, all of which you are probably very familiar with and so are the players. This year we wanted some of the main event maps to be a secret, so after their release players could practice strategies to try and shock the enemy. With most of these being new, that means there's no meta, which could produce some very different outlooks from players come March 18th through the 21st. Which, by the way, you're gonna be there, right? Starting first with Cup. Perhaps coming as no surprise, Cup returns to see a Hidden Cup main event. Cup was originally introduced in Hidden Cup 2 and has produced some of the most unique and entertaining games. Players are very close together and there's two separate bodies of water for players to utilize. The water area is amphibious terrain, which means land units can cross over as well as navy. Players must choose which side to dock or if to dock at all as the game progresses, and if you dock one side, your navy cannot cross over to the other, making things very complicated. We made limited changes to Cup since it's such a good map, but amongst the changes we did make was moving boars to the back of each base to weaken laming attempts, and balancing neutral stones and relics. Introducing High Tides Hidden Cup 3 introduced High Tide, a map which was arguably the most cutthroat and led to some crazy snowballs due to water fights. This year, we've tweaked that concept and have renamed it High Tides as it's pretty much a new map. The water is still an important factor on High Tides, and amongst the water is a tiny gold island. There's less fish this time, and it's also more difficult, if not impossible, to town center that middle gold. Players will need to be cautious as they are quite close together, and land aggression in the middle still brings huge reward. And if the going gets rough, the players have additional stone and gold to find grouped up in the south. Overall, there's more room to expand on this map, there's less of a chance you win with just water, and anything can happen long term. And now to a brand new map, Ori. Ori produces some insanely aggressive games. Players are quite close to one another, with their berries being forward, and additional deer found right next to that. Aggression is definitely an option, but so is walling as the choke point in the middle is quite small. As players consider pushing the middle, they must remember they're at the bottom of a hill when doing so. And if games progress to the mid game, there's always one tiny line of trees on the sides which players could easily chop through. Castle drops, monk rushes, men at arms and archers. Expect this map to have it all. Introducing another brand new map, Mudflow. Do you ever find yourself missing Feudal Age Aggression? Well, this is the map you want to see. On Mudflow, players start with salmon around their town centers for fast food income, and that's before you factor in the two elephants or rhinos and two berry positions. With all that food, players will have a lot of reason to be aggressive, and notably be aggressive for wood control. There are tiny wood lines near the player town centers, and players who are willing to take a risk can do so by lumber camping the middle region. It'll be a risk, but possibly a risk worth taking, because the middle area also holds most of the stone, while most of the outside area holds the gold piles. Non-stop aggression is key, and beware of some sneaky demolition ships in the middle if it goes late. All in all, this map will produce some feudal age frenzy, with farming space bound to be exposed because you can no longer wall in towards the town center. The final and brand new map joining the Hidden Cup 4 map pool is Bypass. And with Bypass, you think Hideout, only better. On Hideout, the wood line in the middle keeps players far apart and limits a lot of utilized strategies. On Bypass, there's an opening right through the center. Some players will happily sit behind their palisade walls and boom, while others may send villagers forward to fight to place another layer of walls on the enemy side. For the most part, the center area cannot be built on, meaning that a tower rush is viable, but a castle would not fit directly in the middle. Okay, so there's clearly some reward for the middle, but the sides of the map also bring reward. On each side of the map, players can take berries, deer, gold, and stone. This means that you might need to think twice about controlling the middle. So if a player is pushing the center of the map, the other could easily take the sides where there's plenty of free gold and stone and food. Or vice versa, if someone is happily soaking up the resources on the side, their main base could be pushed by a big mass. We tested this map extensively, and it produced some of the most insane games. So that means the main event of Hidden Cup 4 
will have 12 overall maps with the five maps I've just introduced to you and the seven maps from the qualifiers. Players will still be picking home maps and players will have to train hard over the next week before they play their round one games. You probably already know by now, but the main event of Hidden Cup is March 18th through the 21st. And not only will the maps be crazy, but the players will be playing with hidden identities. See you there.